Meanwhile, this doctors at a clinic in St. Louis now under investigation accused of advising an elementary school to affirm several fifth grade students as transgender. That despite a teacher who warned them that the children were likely just copying a friend. A group called Parents Defending Education has obtained emails showing a staffer at the school reaching out to local experts for advice on the situation. It all happened back in 2021 in October. Now the Missouri Attorney General is officially investigating what he called, quote, disturbing allegations that the local children's hospital has been harming hundreds of children each year. For that report, we want to bring in Nicole Neely. She is the president and founder of Parents Defending Education, the group we brought up earlier. Good to see you, Nikki. Thanks so much for coming on. Can you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Can you tell us what's going on here? We were we were talking about the uh, the teachers being involved, uh, reaching out to different what are being called experts. What I did not see were anyone reaching out to to parents. Were parents ever brought into these conversations? Sadly, no, and that's something that's really disturbing. So what we did a few months ago is we filed these public records requests with school districts around the WashU gender clinic to see if they had been partnering with local school districts and if so, what that was, what that looked like. And um, as, as came out in these FOIAs, um, it was absolutely horrifying that they were giving teachers, administrators advice on how to suppress information from families, um, be it on this, um, the fifth grade gender contagion, as well as several weeks earlier, we also found that um, they there were girls that had been passing out from chest binders and the gender clinic actually advised the school to keep that information secret from parents. How did this come about? How did um, the unraveling, if, if you will, again, this story it dates a, a few years here at this point or uh, almost a couple of years. Um, but how did all of this come out? What, the, the, this is all from the emails that were found. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like this is a very active gender clinic that has been operating for many, many years doing these kinds of, I mean, shady things. Um, as we saw from Barry Weiss's terrific reporting at the Free Press a few weeks ago, um, there was a whistleblower that came out who had been working in that clinic, and she said she is ideologically to the left of Bernie Sanders, and she thought she was helping people, but now realizes that all she was doing was harming very, very troubled children. And so I think just this constant drumbeat of stories coming out of this clinic, as well as other clinics across the country, should really give parents pause as to whether their school is partnering with clinics and if so, what information is being withheld from them as well. Well, this is, uh, let's talk about the emails uh, that you've obtained. The first one will show from the school to the clinic, all right, school to the clinic, asking for guidance for these students, asking if this is common, saying in part, quote, one of the students in the fifth grade class is coming out as trans, goes on, and now several of her friends are also saying they are trans. Uh, the advice in part from the clinic's co-director to the school was to encourage the youngsters to quote explore parts of their identities including sexuality and gender um, and the best we can do is affirm validate and allow for exploration uh, these are 10 and 11 year olds again for, for, for fifth graders what we're talking about again the parents were not notified you said these latest emails about affirming kids as trans without question was further proof that quote children and their families have been let down at both by the school and the hospital can you talk to me more about that yeah, I think what's really concerning is the teacher asks, you know, is this like for all intents and purposes, a social contagion? And that idea is swatted down by the gender clinic. Um, and so to me, the lack of intellectual curiosity about what is taking place, why are a vast number of 10 year olds in a single classroom suddenly identifying with a different gender, um, that there is no no suspicion that there is any kind of underlying social phenomenon going on, but just affirm, you know, this is this whole idea of child led um, you know, guidance, education. Um, I mean, how many 10 year olds really know who they are at that point in time? Um, and so maybe there is a reason that so many adults, you know, family members, teachers, et cetera, are supposed to guide a child's upbringing and not just absolutely defer to them. I mean, my five year old wanted to be a truck and certainly, you know, we didn't put wheels on him. Yeah, great point. Uh, Nikki Neely joining us live again with that story. We'll continue to follow that in that act of what seems to be an active investigation there by the AG. Uh, Nikki, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you.